I'm not actually an alcoholic, I'm just British. Day in the life of a true Brexit geezer. We Brits are the absolute champions of binge drinking. Pop down, have a couple pints with the lads. I don't think there is another country in Europe or the world that rivals the levels of drunkenness, injury, and kebab meat consumption that we have in the UK. We even invented the gin and tonic during the era of the British Empire, when we were over in India, forcing the locals to build trains. Oh yeah, how are we gonna get all this swag back to old Blighty then? We'll get the locals to shift the gear for us, innit? I and we'll be sipping pina coladas in the port of Madras, boys. Don't worry, those will be useful later for extracting resources. The secret ingredient is crime. We were running to a problem where everybody was getting malaria. Somebody figured out that the quinine in tonic water was an anti-malarial, but the Brits being who they were, they couldn't just drink tonic water on its own, so they started cutting it with gin and lime, and thus the gin and tonic was born. That is bloody lovely. Of course, back in those days, everybody was drunk pretty much all of the time. Nowadays, we managed to fit all of our drinking into just two days at the weekend. <laughs> our binge drinking culture reached its zenith a few years ago when this photograph was snapped in Manchester city centre. <laughs> which resembles a Florentine Renaissance painting with its golden ratio or, or Fibonacci spiral, I can't remember which one it is. So boozing is deeply embedded in the culture, uh, which brings me to me. I've always been a big binge drinker. So once or twice a week, I'll go out, I'll hit the bar with friends, usually on a Friday after work, uh, but Saturday is also fair game. And those days of drinking will be heavy, or those evenings of drinking will be heavy. It'll, it won't be a couple beers and then home. It's like six, seven, eight beers, starting to get drunk, getting ready, going out to the club or going out to a nice bar, getting more cocktails in, and the night continues on till like 3 a.m. You stumble home, you get some revolting takeaway. The only thing I'd eat at two in the morning probably is a Donny Kebab because it's probably much the only thing that's open. And the next morning you wake up with a splitting headache and you're ordering even more disgusting food to help you cope with that hangover. I've known I've wanted to quit drinking for a while. I tried to quit a couple years ago and I did for sort of four months, but I really struggled with it. I felt deprived the entire way through the, the four months. I felt like I was constantly missing out. When my friends would go for beers or drinks, I would have to use like all of my willpower to overcome the desire to go and join them or drink with them. Don't think about beer. Don't think about beer. Don't think about beer. <laughs> and this time it's been a little bit different and I'll sort of get into why a little bit later in the video. One of the big things I've been concerned with is I learned a year or so ago about a particular gene that some people have, which makes them more energized when they drink alcohol. So a lot of people will drink, they'll have two or three drinks and they'll start to feel drowsy or tired, or as soon as the initial buzz wears off, you know, their evening sort of winds to a close. But there are certain people that have this specific gene, which causes them to feel more and more energized the more that they drink. So the first couple, they feel great, and then they have a few more, and they feel even better. And that sort of increase in energy as they drink more doesn't go away, it doesn't dissipate throughout the evening. And I definitely noticed, I haven't done a DNA test, but I know that this is what I'm like. Every couple beers that I have is almost like having an extra coffee. I get more and more hyperactive as the evening goes on. This isn't Yemeni, it's Sulawesi. And the cup's shaking, I don't want my coffee shaking. You seem a tad wound up, buddy. Uh, and apparently it's one of the biggest indicators that could lead to later alcoholism in, in later life. Another problem with it is alcohol is a massive dopamine stimulant. So dopamine is the sort of motivation and drive neurotransmitter in your brain. It's responsible for you know, giving you your get up and go to, to achieve things. It's the thing that your brain releases to get you to go after your goals. And it's the thing that your brain releases when you complete your goals. The problem is when you drink alcohol, you get a massive release of dopamine in your brain. So that's part of the buzz that most people feel when they're on a night out or when they're drinking. The next morning, however, because you've had such elevated dopamine the night before, your baseline level of dopamine the next day is much, much lower, which most people who ever had a hangover understand this because you have no motivation to do anything. It's not just the headache or the bad stomach, because once those symptoms subside later in the day, you still aren't motivated to get off your ass and do anything with your day. Most of my hangover days are spent just binging Netflix for like 10 to 15 hours, which is an insane waste of a Saturday or a Sunday. And at the moment in my life, there are a bunch of projects I want to work on outside of work. I'm writing a book. I'm doing this YouTube channel. I'm managing a couple social media accounts. So it's one of the big reasons why I wanted to stop drinking just go completely cold turkey. 
I'm also really big into my fitness. Like I hit the gym three or four times a week. I do boxing or Muay Thai a couple times a week as well. Uh, and I really enjoy doing that. But one of the big problems I've had in recent years is really trying to dial that in to get the best gains I can and to improve my physique as best I can. Because the problem is when you're drinking every week, you've got a, a whole host of problems going on. Number one, you eat more calories on the nights when you do drink. Like you come home and you're starving and you order takeaway or you get a takeaway on the way home. Number two is on the hangover, all you want is greasy, salty, disgusting food to help you feel better. And again, that's obviously going to derail any nutrition plan that you're on or any diet plan that you're on. The other thing is I'm always super sore over the weekend. So I'll work out on a Friday or I used to work out on a Friday and then go to the bar. Uh, and then Saturday, Sunday, I would be incredibly sore because there's something going on in your body where the alcohol is preventing your body from doing muscle protein synthesis, which is what your body does to repair the muscles after you've like broken them down at the gym. So that slows down progress. And the other big problem is I'm not even sure if the calories in alcohol are actually stored as or they, they work like normal calories. You know, it doesn't necessarily matter if you're storing alcohol as fat because it's screwing up your whole fat storage system anyway, and it's screwing up your hormone profile anyway. So, you know, if you're really serious about the gym and you want to be serious about your nutrition, you just can't be drinking or binge drinking like once or twice a week. It's just, you're never going to make the progress that you want to make, or it's going to be such slow going. One of the other massive drawbacks about alcohol, and this impacts your work, my working out and, and nutrition and things as well, is how it affects your sleep. So everybody knows you drink alcohol, it knocks you out straight away. But the next day you wake up, you don't feel as rested. And the reason for that is because alcohol prevents you from going into what's called REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement sleep. REM sleep is when normally when you dream and it's when your brain is repairing itself. So your uh, this fluid uh, is pushed out of your spinal cord and into your brain and it sort of washes over your brain in these waves. And whilst it's doing that, it helps break down sort of junk proteins and metabolites that are built up in your brain over the course of the day uh, so it's this sort of cleansing process that your brain goes through but your your body doesn't go into that form of sleep when you drink alcohol so that impacts your rest and recovery it impacts your cognition it impacts how you feel and the final reason why i wanted to quit alcohol was i was starting to see an impact on my cognitive performance so i've already always had a really good memory like not a memory for people's birthdays or anniversaries. I never remember those. But that documentary I watched about the mega volcano in Yellowstone National Park when I was like six years old, I can remember every single part of that. Uh, and I was noticing that uh, booze was starting to affect my memory. I was forgetting things that people had said to me. I was forgetting conversations I'd had. Not necessarily full conversations, but parts of conversations I'd had when I was sober. You know, So this the drinking at the weekend was starting to impact my... Uh, how my brain was working throughout the week. Just in general, I've known for a few years that I wanted to quit alcohol. I'm, I've known it's been slowing me down and preventing me from achieving things as quickly uh, as I want to achieve them. Or even, it's just a bit like an anchor. Like everything you do, it slows you down or it makes things worse. It's not benefiting me in any way whatsoever. So I'm now a few months into being completely boost free and I feel absolutely effing fantastic. My sleep improved, but it didn't just improve a little bit. Like every single day for maybe the first month, my sleep got progressively better. Uh, so I stopped needing to wake up in the middle of the night to go to the toilet, which was only happening on occasion, but it was still really friggin' irritating. So that was great. Every morning I was waking up more rested than the morning before, to the point where by the end of the first month and going into the second month, I didn't really need an alarm clock anymore. So I'd go to bed and give myself at least seven and a half to eight hours uh, of sleep but I would just wake up naturally before my alarm because I was getting such good rest in so that felt amazing when it got to like the two to three month mark I started to find that I was getting sharper and sharper uh, which was great because obviously cognition was one of the big reasons why I wanted to quit drinking in the first place but in terms of like how did I notice that uh, you know you'd, you'd, you could have conversations with people you'd be having banter with your friends and someone will say something and you don't think of a comeback. And then three hours later, something comes to your mind and you're like, damn it, I should have said that at the time, right? Um, now those things were just coming to me straight away. Uh, so I was having a lot more witty banter with friends, which was really enjoyable, but also like a great sign that my brain was obviously healing from being away from the alcohol. So my confidence has actually improved since I quit drinking. I'd say I've always been a relatively confident person, 
but I had this sort of creeping social anxiety over the last few years. I hadn't even realized that it was alcohol because it would happen sort of in the middle of the week or randomly to me where I would try and avoid people at work because I didn't want to get into small talk or, you know, I, I just would feel sort of anxious whilst I was wandering around work. That's just completely vanished. So that evaporated, which makes me realize that that was actually due to alcohol. And your confidence increases because you have this sort of belief in yourself because you know you can do something, right? Every day that you're not drinking alcohol, you are proving to yourself that you are a capable person who can do what they say they're going to do. Uh, and that creates a sort of inbuilt confidence that is hard to mimic even with booze. So I actually feel more confident around groups of people now when I go out, when they are drinking and I'm sort of chatting with them and, and having a laugh with them. I feel more confident now than I did when I was drinking, which is incredible and not something I thought would happen. In terms of my physique, I lost around seven pounds, like three and a half to four kilos in the first couple weeks of quitting booze. So that must have obviously been a ton of water retention, even though I was only drinking once or twice a week, it was often enough that it was causing me to just stay bloated all the time. So that was really nice. My stomach sort of flattened out loads, which I guess again is because alcohol causes fat deposits or build up around your liver, right? So I think that was due to that. My stomach got much flatter. My weight loss has plateaued now. And I think that's probably because since I quit alcohol, I've just had crazy amounts of sugar cravings for you know sweet treats snacks caramel lattes and normally i'd be quite harsh on myself and say you can't have this you can't have that but this time because i'm quitting alcohol and that's the number one focus i've allowed myself to have those sugary treats when i want to have them i'm in the process now of curbing them lowering the amount of sugar i'm consuming but when i first quit i was like you know what it's fine eat the sugar if you want to as long as you're not having the booze that's the the main goal here so you know i think it's okay to give yourself that leeway sometimes I think quitting this time has actually been much easier than in the past because I've had this mindset shift when it comes to alcohol. So before I quit this time, I spent a while doing a lot of studying, listening to things like Andrew Huberman's two hour podcast on the basically on the negative effects of alcohol on the brain and body. I built up this sort of bank of evidence as to why you shouldn't drink alcohol and all the damage it's doing. Uh, and that sort of helped me intellectualize the choice. But I also started to view it as a massive anchor in my life rather than something I used to have fun or to enjoy with friends, I really shifted my mindset to where I saw it as, you know, this is slowing me down. This is preventing me from achieving the things that I want to achieve. And because I'm now looking at alcohol in that way, it makes it way, way easier to just not drink it. I don't feel like I'm depriving myself of anything. I actually feel like I'm leveling up by not drinking alcohol. And that mindset shift has made this process way, way easier. So I'm just going to continue. I think I'll start with like aim for a year then turn that into five years, then, then who knows? I don't want to say I'll never drink again because I think that sort of sets you, sets you up for failure where you, if you ever have one drink at a party or a wedding or something, you're then going to turn to yourself and say, oh, well, now I've drank, you know, I'm, I'm back to drinking. Uh, and then you might fall off the wagon in a really bad way. So I don't want to do that. I'm just going to say right now I'm not drinking and I'm going to continue to say right now I'm not drinking until, well, we'll see, I guess but I'm hoping that the benefits will just continue to pile up. And from everything I've seen online, they do. One of the things I've really enjoyed doing over this period is watching other people share their stories on YouTube of how they quit drinking, the benefits of it. And that's sort of really kept me going and, and kept me motivated to, to, to stick to this resolution. So it's part of the reason why I wanted to share this. So yeah, if you've quit boozing, if you've, you're off the alcohol at the moment, or if you're considering it, comment below, share your story with me, let me know how you're doing, what benefits you saw if you did quit, or what are the reasons you want to quit if you're thinking about it. Uh, and I'd, I'd love to read them and, and reply to you guys.